If you're trying to plug your things into your other things in the home studio, but you don't know which cable to use, well, in this video, I'm going to break it down and give you my complete guide to home studio cables. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. Now, if you're using an audio interface or a mixer in your home studio, it can be confusing at times knowing what cable you need to connect one device to another. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down and make it simple. So this video is going to be in four parts. Number one, we're going to look at power and data cables. So mostly USB cables. Number two, we're looking at audio output to your headphones and speakers. Number three, we're looking at audio input from microphones, instruments, and other sources. And number four, for those who want a bit more information, we're going to look at the cable types and definitions of different connectors in more detail. And to help you out, down in the description, there are timestamps to all of the different sections, as well as links to where you can pick up these cables for your home studio. You can also go to studiolivetoday.com slash cables for my complete list of cable types and links. And all of those links are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, you pay the same amount, but they break off a small chunk and send it to me. Most audio interfaces and mixers in the home studio use USB to provide data and in some cases power from your computer or your device to the mixer or your interface. And the majority of those use this cable, a USB A to B cable, which plugs into your mixer or interface and the USB end goes into your Mac or your PC. Most of your USB audio interfaces are bus powered, which means that they get their power directly from the USB bus on your Mac or your PC or the device you're connecting to via USB. However, larger audio interfaces and mixers like this Samson MixPad actually have their own AC power supply, meaning the USB cable is only used to send data from the mixer or interface to your computer. And if you're planning to connect your mixer or your interface to your iPad or iPhone, you'll need this, the Lightning to USB 3 adapter adapter from Apple. This allows you to power and connect data to your iPhone or iPad. And if you're using a bus powered interface with your iPhone or iPad, I also recommend one of these, a powered USB hub. These are also great for your Mac or PC. They plug into AC power and power up your USB ports so all your devices can be charged and connected at the same time. And finally, if you have a newer device like this one, the Steinberg UR22C or a Focusrite Scarlett third generation, you'll need a USB-C cable because these use USB 3.0, a C connection instead of the B connector on our older interfaces. So now that we have our power and our data sorted, how do we send the sound out from our interface or mixer to our monitor speakers or to our headphones? For your headphone output, most mixers and interfaces have one of these, a quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter stereo TRS socket that we can plug our headphones directly into. Now, if your headphones have one of these, an eighth inch or a three and a half mil jack, you'll need to get one of these, a converter that will change it from an eighth inch to a quarter inch so you can plug it into your headphone socket. Now, some older interfaces like this Tascam actually have a three and a half mil jack, but don't worry, even if your headphones have the larger jack size, you can get a converter that goes the other way. And finally, some really handy things for the home studio are these. These are headphone double adapters. And yes, you can plug two sets of headphones in to one plug. And that's super handy because most of your consumer level audio interfaces and mixers will only have one headphone jack. So this allows you to plug in two sets of headphones. Some of our budget interfaces use these, the unbalanced RCA outputs, these red and white composite jacks that you're probably familiar with if you've ever connected any audio equipment. And to connect these up, we're going to need one of these, an RCA cable to connect up to our speakers or our other audio source. So to connect this up, we simply put one cable in each of these RCA ports and then connect one of those into each of the RCA ports on our speaker. And you can see here that if you are using two speakers, you may want to use a cable that you can separate or two individual cables so that you can connect up each speaker individually. And with these cables, you can also go out to any stereo or audio device that uses RCA inputs to play back your audio. Now, if your speaker doesn't have RCA, it only has this, a balanced TRS input, no problem. You can get one of these cables that will convert your unbalanced signal to an unbalanced TS signal. Now, it's not gonna give you the benefit of being a balanced cable, but it is gonna be able to connect up and send the audio from your interface to your speaker. And once again, hang out to the end if you wanna learn about the difference between balanced and unbalanced signals when sending audio. Moving up to our Steinberg interface. Now, this one actually has balanced TRS output. So what we wanna do 
is send a balance signal from these directly into the balance port here on our speakers to get the best quality audio. And to do that, we're gonna use one of these, a balanced TRS cable. TRS stands for tip, ring, and sleeve. And once again, one end goes into our interface output and the other goes into the input on our speaker. And once again, if your speaker this time doesn't support a balanced TRS, you can use one of these to convert it back to an RCA and plug the TS into your interface and the RCA into your speaker. And if you're in a pinch, you can use an instrument cable or a standard TS cable to connect, but you're not gonna get the same level of clarity that you're gonna get with a balanced cable. Now, you may have noticed that my speaker here also has this, an XLR input, so I can actually connect up with a TRS to XLR cable. Now, there's no benefit to this. It's the same balanced signal, as you can see there. These are both balanced signals, but it just gives you that extra level of flexibility if you've got that particular cable hanging around. And some mixers and interfaces even have an XLR output. So you can use an XLR to XLR cable, which we're gonna cover in the next section all about microphones. Let's now look at connecting things to our mixer and our interface. And we'll start with a microphone. That's one of the most common things you'll connect. And for this, you'll need an XLR male to XLR female cable. Now, most interfaces these days have these combo jacks, which have an XLR and a TRS cable connection, which I'll show you in a moment. In this case, we wanna grab the XLR cable plug it in, and there you go. We're good to go with our microphone. And remember, if you're connecting a condenser microphone, you need to make sure that your 48 volts or your phantom power switch or button is on. Now, if you have an interface like this Behringer UM2 that has one of these, an instrument jack, you might be thinking, Pete, can I plug a microphone in using an XLR to TS connection? Just slide it in there into my microphone. Short answer is no, it's not gonna go through the preamp and you're not gonna get enough volume from your microphone. So I highly recommend if you're using a mic that you're plugging it in via XLR. Now, some instruments like keyboards, pianos and synths have a balanced output. So you can use a cable like this to send each channel left and right as a balanced connection to an XLR, but the better way to go is to use one of these, a TRS to TRS connection to send each channel into the two channels here on your interface. Now, if you've only got a one channel interface, you'll only be able to do this in mono, but if you've got a two channel interface, you need to make sure they're set to line mode as opposed to instrument, and then plug those in if you're sending a balanced audio source into your mixer or your interface. However, the most common instrument you'll probably be connecting is a guitar using a standard instrument cable. And you can, of course, connect your keyboards and synths. Anything that's got a quarter inch out, this is going to send it. Now, if you've got an interface like this, these are line inputs, but we can actually convert this second one into a high Z or high Z or instrument input. So if we click that button down, this is now an instrument input, meaning it can accept any standard instrument cable, and it's gonna be at an instrument level instead of a line level, which is important if you're recording a guitar or another instrument that sends a instrument level signal. On this Behringer interface, you can see here that this is just designed for instruments. So this isn't a line level at all, but that's great for plugging in your guitars or your other instruments and recording using this one. Now, the great part about using a two-channel interface or a mixer is that any stereo signal we like can be connected and anything that has a three and a half mil output can be connected up either with one of these, a three and a half mil to two RCA cable, or even better, one of these, a three and a half mil to two TS cable. So with this one, we can plug directly into a stereo channel on our mixer or interface and the other end can go into our smartphone, our tablet, any device with a three and a half mil stereo output jack. And you can see here, even if your smartphone doesn't have a headphone jack, you can use your dongle adapter to send your stereo signal out and plug it into your mixer or your interface. Now, one question I get asked a lot is, can you send audio from your mixer to your interface or your interface to your mixer? And you can using a TRS cable. So let's show you that now. Now to send audio from our mixer to our interface, I've got a TRS cable plugged into the right output of my mixer into the right line input of my audio interface. Just need to make sure that's on line mode now. And then I just do the same with the left channel and the stereo signal from this mixer is now coming in as a stereo input into this interface. Want to go the other way? No problem. This time I've got the output of the audio interface going into the first channel here of our mixer. So I just plug in a second cable and these first two channels will now be the two channels of our audio interface. 
Now, if you don't have balanced cables, no problem. You can use your unbalanced cables like this one, a quarter inch to RCA to plug in to the RCA inputs there. Any combination is going to work for you. And you can even adapt these. So you can use little adapters like this. If I wanted to make this quarter inch to quarter inch, we can use these little adapters. And once again, the adapters, the cables, all the gear that I show in this video are down in the description. And the last little cable I'm going to show is this one, a three and a half mil to three and a half mil jack. Now these aren't used a heap in the home studio, but they can be super handy for sending a stereo output to another stereo input using a TRS cable for your car, your home stereo, a bunch of other uses. Now you're still here, which means you're interested in the slightly nerdier stuff. So much respect. Let's jump in. Let's start with the difference between balanced and unbalanced cables. So this is a balanced TRS cable. It stands for tip, ring, and sleeve. This is an unbalanced TS cable. So it's just got a tip and a sleeve. Now the difference here is that a balanced cable has two copies of the audio, one of them flipped around, which is then flipped back at the end as well as the ground. And that means it's less susceptible to interference. It's a better cable to choose if you don't want to get any interference in your signal. This one, doesn't have that. It's just got one copy, which means it is more prone to interference, it means it's fine for things like guitars and instruments. But if you're sending signals that you want to make sure are super clean in the home studio, you want to go for a balanced cable over an unbalanced one. Let's make things a little more complicated. The TRS cable can also be used as a stereo unbalanced cable. Yes, it's got two uses. So if you are plugging it into a stereo source, it won't be balanced. It'll be using the two additional parts there for the left and right channel as well as the ground which makes sense when you look at this little sucker, the TRRS cable tip ring ring sleeve. This carries stereo audio, it carries the ground, but it also carries a mono input. And this is used so that you can send your microphone input to something like a smartphone and your stereo output. So this is another use of the two different cable types. What about XLR? Well, this is another form of our balanced cable, but instead of having a tip ring and sleeve, it's got these three pins that actually carry the exact same information. And that's why you can have a TRS to XLR balance cable and it will work out just fine. So if you're using an XLR or a TRS, you're sending a balanced signal regardless of what the connection is at the end. Now that was an awful lot, but we've really only just scratched the surface. There's some great resources down in the description if you're looking for more information about cables. And don't forget you can head over to studiolivetoday.com slash cables for my complete guide to all the cables you'll ever need in the home studio.